Hi, Domi and Lindsay. I'm Carly from Be Seen, which is Britain's East and Southeast Asian network. And we're an organisation that celebrates EC heritage as well as raising awareness on the issues that affect our community within the UK. So, hi. <laughs> so I wanted to say that you've both worked on films that shaped me, but Turning Red was by far the most personal. For the first time ever, I've seen a story that accurately mirrors my own home, from ancestor veneration to Mimi's attitude towards studying, and even the tissue roll on the foldable table being visible when they watch Chinese period dramas. <laughs> All of it is very, very close to my upbringing, so it's incredible to see a Disney Pixar film to represent this. So this leads me to ask, how does it feel to be spearheading one of, if not the first Western mainstream animated film, which features an EC lead that isn't set in an Asian location? Yeah, uh, it feels like it's a very momentous occasion and like I, I just feel so honored and feel so like, I, I feel that, that, that weight, that responsibility <laughs> to be the first and also that responsibility to be the first of many. And uh, hopefully, you know, with this movie, we're going to see more stories uh, by like Asian storytellers and uh, just re kind of re redefine what the universal stories, like what that even looks like or, or feels like, you know? And I feel like it was, it was, it is even to your point, to your question, even more specific to being the first generation you know, kind of, and that's so in the story, that struggle between, you know, a generational struggle, but also between East and West. And mm -hmm. I think it's, to your point about it not being set in an Eastern location, that that was a very kind of fundamental part of your story mm -hmm. was how, kind of what that, the difference in the specificity of that experience mm -hmm. and kind of how it felt growing up during that, you know, if, in that kind of uh, environment. So I think ca Canadians are super proud of this film too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I think that's the same to be said, you know, for a lot of um, Chinese diasporas. I noticed especially that Cantonese was included in the film. And for me, being a Cantonese speaker, that really touched me because I even caught it in some of the background noise when yeah. some of the mm -hmm. passersby shouted at Mei Mei. So I wanted to ask, how has being part of a Chinese diaspora impacted the research and making of this film? Yeah, uh, it impacted it a, like a huge amount. Like, um, you know, Mei and her family live in Toronto Chinatown. And... Uh, it was important for us to get the the details right of the Chinatown residents. Like they're not just Chinese. Like they're specifically like a lot of the earliest residents of Chinatowns in Toronto and San Francisco and Oakland are from a specific region in China called Taishan. Um, and we wanted to make sure that like the like that 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 we like honored that that like we heard that like Taishanese Cantonese um, in in the the shots with May running through Chinatown and uh, like even like with the with the Chinese characters on the signs and stuff, we wanted to make sure that there was like a mix of traditional and simplified Chinese just to make sure that we were like being true to the actual residents of those Chinatowns. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and that that involved doing a lot of research because I, I I am just one representation <laughs> of one Chinese experience, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't the only Asian voice uh, in writing and creating this story. So it was important for us to like, uh, you know, go on research trips to cultural consultants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we talked to a lot of cultural consultants uh, from Toronto Chinatown, SF Chinatown. We visited temples there. Um, and we just made sure that like, you know, we had a lot of yeah. internal Pixar uh, cultural consultants too. So people who were, you know, um, South Asian or, or people who had lived in um, East Asian. East Asian. Yeah. And, I mean, so we tried to kind of pull as many people in as possible so that the experience was at least as informed and slightly broader than the individual yeah. experience. For sure. Great. I mean, that is also, you know, to be noted that the film obviously has been in the works for the past year, four years, but it goes without saying that it's now being released at a time of heightened trauma faced by our community as a result of the pandemic, which of right. course, you'll know, it has instigated movements like Stop Asian Hate and Very Asian, but also encouraged us to share our stories and joy. And we're now seeing increasing visibility of EC people in mainstream media. So I wanted to ask as well, what challenges did you come across when you first started and during the making of Turning Red? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, making movies is hard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> making a movie for, like making a story for four years like, like the same story is just it just has so many challenges but I think especially with this movie like for me personally it was 
it was uh, tricky to come up with the ending, I think, like how to resolve that mother-daughter relationship in like a satisfying but also truthful way. Uh, because I don't think at the time when I pitched it that I had completely resolved <laughs> my really own relationship with my mom and, 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 and dad as well. So it was almost like I was going on the same journey as May was as I was making the yeah. movie. So that was like, it, it was funny, like we, we found the ending probably in screening, what, like screening six? six? Yeah. Like out of eight screenings. Like yeah, it was, it was a, a long six, time. <laughs> yeah, it was a sixth screening where, where I, I think we, we've, like, finally kind of, like, nailed that, like, last kind of conversation between May and her mom at the end. But up until that point, we were just trying different things because I was just, like, my head was spinning. I was like, I don't, I just don't yeah. want it to feel like we're wrapping everything up neatly in a bow. That like, didn't feel authentic. That didn't feel authentic because yeah. I feel like that tension between, like, an Asian kid and their parent, it stays forever. <laughs> but you it also want to feel like, like, there's some resolution yeah. and that there's growth at the end too. So how do you balance that? Yeah, that was how do you answer what the audience is craving? Cause they really do love, if you, if you've done it right, they love these characters, mm -hmm. right. And you, they're going to want them to be better mm -hmm. at the end of the film, but you were really, I mean, there's an easier version of this film that we easily, that could have done. That's like, everything is perfect. They've all changed. They've, it's the whole yeah. relationship is different. Is like, I love you. Yeah. Right? And like, she kept being like, that doesn't feel <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I think, I think it was really kind of the, the stronger and the, the diff more difficult choice was to be like, nope, we're not going to wrap it all up in a bow, it's, but it's going to feel better. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel like you're glad that they are where they are mm -hmm. and that they have a lot, they have a lot more to go. go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. It's also rare for Asian parents to say, I love you quite explicitly exactly, as exactly. well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Super. Like, and we kept getting like notes about like, like, why doesn't the mom say I love you at the end? I was like, no. I know. She has to like, you have to feel it, but she can't say it because that's not you know, yeah. accurate. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for your time. And lastly, rice or noodles? Is there a preference for either? Rice. Rice. Oh, okay. I was going to go noodles, but okay. Rice because it's so versatile. You know, you can eat it with anything. I feel like it's good. I feel like we could go out and we wouldn't fight over the same dish. Oh, yeah, we would. Like, you know, <laughs> A very diplomatic answer. Yeah. Thank you so much, Domi and Lindsay. I really appreciate your time today. I'm wishing you all you. the best Thank for you. the future. Thank you. Bye. Bye.